Hey everybody, this is Sam from Butterscotch Shenanigans, and I'm doing a quick time lapse of creating a chest asset in Inkscape for our upcoming title, which is codenamed Four Corners. Now you see I'm doing here is I use a duplication along with um, the addition tool, which is done by hitting Control Plus in order to create a lot of the shapes uh, very quickly and have complete symmetry. And then I go in afterwards uh, grabbing nodes and swing things around to kind of give things some actual character. You can give character to just about anything you create basically by bulging some parts of it um, and cornering others. So I'm putting the first pass on the chest bars, as you might call them, which kind of look like knees at this point. Uh, and my style that I've developed from working in Inkscape generally involves um, heavy use of black outlines, which I think makes everything just kind of look cartoony and fantastic. Um, and then really, really taking the, trying to take the character of something up a notch. So taking something like a keyhole, which of course would normally be tiny uh, on a chest and making it you know, the size of what you see as the character on the right there, the size of his torso, basically. I use a mixture of the pen as well as the uh, pencil tool, depending on kind of the freeformness of the shape I'm drawing, and then a lot of just node work. So using the node tool, grabbing things and pushing them around, um, and swapping between sharp corners and curved lines to get the shape that I want. Now what you're seeing here is you'll see a lot of duplication happening. And then on top of that, uh, there'll be a multiplication effect happening. So that's the, if you hit control and star, or in my case, I have it hot keyed onto W because I use it all the time. Um, and that allows you to take two shapes, overlap them, and then create the shape that is the shared overlap between those two. Um, so I use it to kind of contain things, uh, to do all the shadow work, which will be coming up here in a little bit. Now the alignment tools, which are on the right, uh, I use very, very heavily. Um, like I said, my work is generally lazy, so I like to make things symmetrical and then um, use one or two things on the end product to create a sort of asymmetry that sets the whole thing off and makes it not look quite so uh, fabricated. But the alignment tools also work on nodes, so you can use them to uh, snap two nodes onto a same line, it will snap them onto a shared line in between the two though, uh, unlike unlike when you snap shapes together um, and they actually form to one another, the, the node alignment stuff all happens on kind of a shared plane, so you have to make sure you account for that. So here I am duplicating it again. And I use a 30 opacity black uh, shadow on just about everything I do. Um, if you actually start using, uh, some people are way better at color than I am. Um, I'm still kind of getting my, I'm just starting to get my toe holds on there. I've finally gotten good enough at doing line work. Um, that that's, that's something I'm starting to explore. But um, for the most part, I just, I literally just use a black 30 shadow, 30 opacity shadow on things. Uh, you can change the opacity in the bottom left down there by your stroke. Um, and I find that really sets things off nicely. So what I've done here is set the, set the shadow on the top shading or on the top of the chest, and then use the dropper tool to set the actual color of the bottom part of the chest, since presumably it would be darker. So here comes a lot of uh, multiplication, so you see that happening there. Grab another one, flatten those nodes out, multiply, uh, and that gives that kind of depth effect inside of that chest. Slap some shinies on it. And what I like to do is, um, what I've learned to do is actually make most of the things as, most of the uh, objects that you see are actually one piece. So I faked those, I faked that line on the, uh, on the two chest bars as well as the centerpiece so that I can very easily change the color of those three gold bar pieces um, by just selecting three items as opposed to having to select uh, six, which would be much more difficult if you're doing it through shadows and a variety of other things. So here comes that 30 opacity, as it's 40, 30 opacity shadow, there it is. Wiggling stuff around with the note tool.
and I do do a lot of, uh, the beauty of Inkscape, of course, is that you can do a lot of experimentation very, very quickly. Um, so in this case, you'll see this shine piece I put in was kind of a, kind of a stand-in, uh, ended up being way too dominant on the overall uh, feel of the thing. Uh, kind of testing with some line work on the left there as well to see if that works. Of course, it doesn't. So the nice thing about Inkscape, of course, is that you can you can build these things, you can flip it around, you can wiggle nodes. You do all these things that you just can't do with a pencil. Um, the truth is I can't actually draw very well with a pencil, and I think it's because I learned how to draw in Inkscape. So I'm used to being able to, uh, to kind of wiggle my work around and really have no cost to experimentation. One of the things I found that actually helps me a lot is if I feel like I'm making kind of stale shapes, I just literally just grab them um, and rotate them about 20 degrees and then flip them. And oftentimes the shape that's resulted from that is actually the shape I end up using, which is kind of goofy. So here again is a black 20 or 30 outline. Um, and all these assets created for this particular game are going to be small on screen, so I'm using a bit higher contrast all the time. Um, of course, if this was going to be blown up very, very large for something, uh, you might do some more detail work or vary the contrast a bit, uh, do some fancier color stuff. And here comes that one line of asymmetry I was talking about. So now that the overall kind of shape of the thing is done and the detail work has been done on those metal bars, we're going to come in and add a little bit of extra line work to really sell the volume on the top piece of the chest. Uh, like I said, these acids are actually quite tiny. Um, so I don't actually end up doing this on the bottom half because, frankly, I don't particularly care about the bottom half of the chest. that 20 outline, 20 black opacity, coming in to set off the line work there, and uh, again sell that kind of depth happening on the chest. And here we are finishing up with the kind of last final highlight details which go on the body of the chest alone. And the nice thing about the node tool is that it selects through groupings. Um, so you can use it to grab a lot of different pieces, uh, ungroup them from whatever the current groups are, and then shove them all together. So in that case, I drop the opacity on those white pieces um, so they actually have more of a blended look. Here's my feeble attempt at uh, flipping the colors around so we get a nice kind of uh, solid gold chest with almost kind of a bronzed um, uh, casing here. And for export, in my case, we export to Game Maker, so it requires a black overlay in order to not have any artifacting happen. Pop that out, and we're done. Thanks for watching.